but now people are thinking of taking this virtual world out out of just of games to everyday life so say you we are meeting on zoom so we could be in the metaverse um in a in a sort of a room where we are kind of have a feeling where we are sitting in front of each other welcome to a better lifestyle i am your host richard and i will be with you throughout this journey this show is here to empower individuals to do more in life professionally you will find a variety of topics that will help you to be more productive and more successful. So join me and the professionals from different industries as we bring education and knowledge for more success. Hi everybody, my name is Richard. Welcome to A Better Lifestyle. Today our topic is the metaverse, and I have the pleasure the pleasure to have Sam Kameny. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Good, good. Yep. It's good. It's, good. it's Richard, it's great to be on your show. Looking forward to talking with you about all things to do with metaverse, NFTs, Web3, blockchain, all those sort of things. Great. Uh, tell us a brief resume on uh, of uh, who you are. And uh, we'll yes. take it from there. Fantastic. So last 15 years, I've been involved with lots of different tech startups. My, I've had two exits in past. So my first startup was in the e-commerce space. I built that. I grew that company and I sold that in 2015. Then I joined an e-sports startup. With that, I was based in um, near San Francisco for a short time. That got acquired in 2018. And... Um, and after that, I wrote books on tech startups. I speak at events. I've sp spoken at TED um, conference. I've spoken at lots of different um, places. And I've helped lots of different startups build. Um, in the last little while, I've been quite involved in the blockchain space. So um, I run the Web3 podcast where I interview investors and founders of other startups who are building products, building things in the space. Um, that's one of the things I do. And the other thing I do is I work as an advisor, as a growth advisor, and help few companies grow in, in this space. So they are in gaming space, they are in smart contract space, they create smart contracts and things. So if you are someone who's building a startup and you need any help ever, um, feel free to reach out. I love helping people. Um, and that's why I share and I educate a lot about on this topic and stuff. So, so that's, that's me. Um, feel free to ask me any, any questions, Richard. No problem. So you mostly, you said the startups, but it's mostly in tech or in business general? Tech, mostly in tech, mostly in tech. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's new now with, uh, the metaverse? Uh, I know things are evolving pretty fast. Uh, whatever we're talking about technology, where are we uh, <laughs> right now? Where are we right now with uh, with the metaverse now? Yeah. So, uh, you know what? So, first of all, what is metaverse? I mean, um, it is such a loosely defined term that it is quite hard to um, for people to understand exactly what is metaverse. Like to me, metaverse is like just a sort of a virtual world. Now, the virtual worlds exist in the gaming space. You know, any game you sp play, there is like a virtual world in it. But now people are thinking of taking this virtual world out out of just of games to everyday life. So say you, we are meeting on Zoom. So we could be in the metaverse um, in a in a sort of a room where we are kind of have a feeling where we are sitting in front of each other. And um, to make this experience more immersive, um, some people wear sort of those sort of uh, 3D glasses like Oculus or, or lots of those sort of um, devices available. But they, I still feel like we're still some time away from the real maturity because those glasses are heavy, cumbersome, they make you dizzy. So there isn't much public acceptance of, of those um, sort of devices. So I think the jury is still out there about how we will um, get involved in metaverse. It's just like um, video conferencing 
and those sort of softwares have been there um you know we could make video calls on whatsapp or facebook or like facebook messenger or so many different apps for so many years um and google hangouts and all those things have been there for so many years like five to eight years nine years but the acceptance of zoom came because of a bit because of covid and everything and people had to work from home before mm -hmm. that people didn't used to think that they'd be able to work from home like for years or for months. That's what happened with COVID. It forced everyone and then people got used to it. Like we do Zoom now, we don't even feel strange. And the same thing will happen eventually with Metaverse in some ways. Um, it's just that I do still feel like at the stage at where we are, where we are, it's still not very user friendly. And there still has to be an event which pushes us into that sort of a thing. And then we will have even more collaboration remotely. And, and you know, it just opens up the world. So it's like you are in Montreal, I'm in New Zealand. We are like 12,000 miles away or something or 12,000, 15,000 kilometers away. And we can still communicate as if we are in the same room. Um, so it just makes the same experience. The metaverse makes it more immersive. And it's able to do that with the use of uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, those sort of technologies. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, what, uh, how do you think the metaverse is going to affect the marketplace, how we do things? Um, so just like whenever there is a new property um, on the market, there is like, a, you know, people... Um, want to be there so that they can be first because initially things are cheap just like I've been doing Google ads since 2004 and I used to be able to buy ads for a few cents and the same ads now cost $30, $20 a click so it was very very cheap there's hardly any competition so when you are early you get access to market at a much more discounted rate it's kind of like an arbitrage if you are early so the same thing happens in the metaverse that if you are early, um, you can buy real estate, you can buy land, you can buy things and have that sort of um, and have that access to an audience that you wouldn't otherwise. So so that is sort of the, the promise. That's why there is a bit of hype. That's why people are going after those sort of things. Um, so, yeah. So what can uh, what what are the opportunities in the metaverse and what can we do exactly in the metaverse? Um, so right now, the opportunities in, in metaverse are that you can um, buy um, real estate in metaverse. You can buy ad space in metaverse to advertise your business, your profession. You can run events in the metaverse. So there are lots of event based platforms. So they can have different rooms and each room there is different um, event, workshops, speaking engagement, those sort of things going on. And you can go from one room to another room or one hall to another hall just like a real life event go to that listen to the someone talking and interact with people who are standing in the crowd around you and you are also one of the person in the crowd and you can go um you can use like a uh, glasses like oculus type glasses uh, vr glasses um or you can use mouse and keyboard and interact and click on someone's name and talk with them and um in the crowd click on someone's avatar on the cloud and so there are those sort of things that are that do already exist but still the adoption is um not to the same level as we see the adoption of something like zoom or google hangouts or like or like google meetup or something like that so um so yeah that's that's the state that we are in at this stage mm. And uh, which companies right now that we have to look for concerning uh, the metaverse? Oh, so um, Decentraland and Sandbox have done uh, a good job so far um, in in promoting their platform. But there are so many, so many. The thing is that because the space is still early, there isn't been a clear winner. Like when it came to video conferencing, Zoom was the clear winner. Zoom and Slack and Discord and, you know, five or ten companies were the clear winner. Um, in Metaverse, there, I don't see anyone, any like five or ten companies like this that are the clear winners yet because there isn't mass adoption yet. So no one has the, the massive numbers yet.
uh, but we will see we will see eventually there will be some major event um company so that when the real event is being run it's live telecasted in metaverse and you can go to the that event and and engage with the crowd network with the crowd listen to the event participate in the event um so there will be event management companies there will be property real estate companies there will be lawyers who then specialize in in metaverse uh, <laughs> real estate metaverse uh, intellectual property so just everything that you see in real world um that would extend to just like everything that was in the retail world extended in the e-commerce world or the online commerce world sort of thing um 20 years ago it didn't seem like it but now it's it's like just normal people buy uber eats just like they used to go to a restaurant people buy things on amazon or ebay or wherever um like or a thousand different um shopify websites so so yeah um we we will get there we will get there in in future and uh, what's the different uh, characteristics of each metaverse whether we're talking the central land axi infinity what's the difference between all those uh... axi infinity is more like a game i mean they all have some more or less some gamification in in their metaverses to get people engaged to get get people keep playing and stuff and they all have different art style they all have um um of course they all are like um some of them are so so different some of them are just made as games as play to earn games that the more you interact the more tokens you win and then you can sell your um you interact with them as nft so you need an nft so a lot of metaverses you have your character that's moving around in the metaverse you have to buy that initial character and then that character upgrades so a lot of games are kind of creating that sort of a uh, um a model and then you can if you want to buy a car you buy like a race car from say meta racer x that's another project that i know of um or I, i mean i know the founders of and then you can form your own groups your own teams and then you compete against other teams in car racing so there'd be lots of fun gamification and um things happening in the metaverse the key difference is that you know in previously say you are playing a car game um um like need for speed or something like that and you you finish playing you switch off that said that's the end of your car um you built a car in that and that's the end of it whereas now you build a car you can take that car out of that metaverse take it to another metaverse and things like that already happen um and and once you're finished playing you can pass it on to your niece or nephew or son daughter whoever you want to pass it on or you can sell it on an open marketplace your your character your house your car your things because the a lot of these things live on a decentralized blockchain like these nfts live on that so um or like a um, ipfs like a um, internet sort of uh, distributed database not in a company server so so then they are free from free to be traded on and all that okay so besides the gaming and uh, or the the cards you mentioned any like any other different sectors besides that i know about the gaming but the oh corporate- sports is very big sports is uh, it's like you know like when um um Steph Curry the NBA basketball player um hit 3000 three pointers or something like that he got the world record he released 3000 of his shoes uh, under armor shoes as um nfts that you can wear in metaverse so um for example uh, say you bought one of his under armor shoes to wear on your character in decentraland but then you also have a character in sandbox or when your character goes from decentralized land to sandbox you can still have the same shoes in that in that world in that sort of virtual world or your character can and the other people can see or oh, you are wearing under armor shoes from Steph Curry so that means you are the first 3000 people to buy one of these and um so that's a that's a clear example of a sports and a brand like under armor and and an nba sort of a sports star um jumping on this sort of uh on this technology quite early on and having that sort of interoperability that you can take your character from one world to another like one metaverse to another metaverse and still have that and then your shoe would look the art style of decentraland when it's in decentraland and your shoes will look of a different art style when it goes there um to sandbox 
So all this sort of things are possible in metaverse, which weren't possible before or, or because of blockchain technology, because of NFTs, because of metaverse. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, so what's the connection between everything, the NFTs, the crypto, the blockchain with the metaverse? What's the connection? Okay. So um, the thing is, you could have metaverse and not use crypto, blockchain, NFTs at all. You could have it as a centralized one. You could have it just a closed system. So, uh, and you know, that is where the, the metaverse, the, the definition is so wide because Say you play Minecraft, you've created a world in Minecraft. That does not rely on blockchain. That does not rely on. That's just a centralized sort of a gaming um, gaming software or a game, uh, Minecraft, and you can create your own world. So it's kind of your own metaverse in, in a way. So, so that is one example. But what where blockchain technology comes in is blockchain is just more or less you can say it's like a distributed database so most of the things you use on the internet even your name right now your profile details on zoom they are stored in zoom server which is hosted on aws or, or somewhere like google cloud or somewhere or maybe their own servers um whereas if it was a blockchain based product it's de your details won't be stored in a company centralized database they would be stored in a decentralized database that is hosted in thousands or millions of computers around the world. So it's not, it's independent. There is no um, central authority. No one can switch it off and you have the independence. Um, so right now, Zoom can block your account if they want to, or you have to pay Zoom. Uh, once it's on a decentralized database, it's your characters are yours. Um, so it's like if you play on Minecraft, um, because it's a centralized sort of a game um, owned by Microsoft, you have to follow their rules and you have to be in that ecosystem. You cannot play your Minecraft character and take it out and take it to another world. Blockchain makes it decentralized. So you can take out your character, you can sell it on a, um, on a marketplace if you once you're done with playing with it, um, or you can gift it to someone else, or you can use that character in another game. So that is the key difference. So blockchain is a decentralized way of doing things. It's a new way of doing things. And NFTs are just um, pretty much non-fungible um, tokens. So it's, often it is art. It doesn't have to be, but it is just a file. You can say a file um, that has a unique number attached to it, a unique token number attached to it. And that has the details of who created the file, who bought it, all those sort of things on the blockchain that you can go and examine. And most of the the metaverses coming out these days um, in the Web3 space, they use NFTs. You use NFTs to interact with them. Um, so yeah, and so they give these NFTs give you the ability to sell them, trade them, buy them, um, those sort of things. So yeah. Okay. And uh, you were speaking of land before. How does the whole yes. uh, land work? Uh, the space because I know you could. So yeah, so metaverse has like all the land they've divided in like most of the metaverses. So you could create your own metaverse. You could create pieces of land in that attach a token number to each piece of land and sell it as an NFT, non-fungible token. It's non-fungible. There's only one of it. Um, and people can buy land and then they can do based on what you what your metaverse allows. They could build things on it. They could advertise other things um, or advertise their product on it. So when people go and see the map of your metaverse, um, people can see, oh, here's um, here's Snoop Dogg's house. And the next right next to it is um, that he bought. And then right next to it is is uh, your shop that you are trying to sell something. And then people can go in it and based on whatever model you have created and stuff. So, um, so a lot of these things already exist. But it has not reached mass adoption yet. We are still very, very early in in this sort of stage, in this sort of a thing. I know, I know these places. Uh, whether it's Axie, I think, or uh, the other ones, uh, yes. the lands are pretty now. The value, the land are pretty expensive now. 
are there other are there other places on uh, that we could find uh, land that is uh, cheaper or it's most <laughs> everything is the um, same? in fact it is it has gone a lot cheaper right now it used to be very expensive few months ago it has gone a lot 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 cheaper right now because the thing is that the audience is not there the land is only valuable if the audience is there just like you know google is only valuable their ads make only money because people are there so as long as people are there it's valuable if any website if it has zero audience zero people on it it's worth zero dollars so yeah. so that's what really matters okay and uh how does someone now if they want to get into the matter in into the metaverse how does someone that position themselves to go into that space so what oh. i would say is go and find some projects that you like and go and join their discord be a member of it see what they are doing do some research just don't go and buy straight away something um i think um key thing is research be see which is a community that you want to be part of that you can associate with um see where you see that it will continue to sort of the team that will continue to go and build and not just going to disappear after a month or so so that's what i would highly highly recommend okay and what's the cost of entry in in that space like uh, do we oh, it could be anything you could buy things i mean there are even a lot of new projects they will even give out some stuff for free so you can join but there's often could be gas fees attached and that could be anything from two dollars or few cents to to hundreds of dollars um there could be and once again the same with property it could be from zero dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars so it all depends on you know how much does the house cost where is your house is it in a you know is it is it in a slum in a flavela or is it in a um, is it a mansion with 35 rooms and a tennis court and a you know and a mini airport in it attached to it so so it all depends it all depends on what you're buying where you're buying and all that okay and where do you see the metaverse in uh two three years or five five years from now oh so that's a uh, very interesting i think one of the clear uh sort of use case is is in the gaming space um because i've been a gamer and i've seen gaming industry is absolutely massive bigger than the entertainment and movies and tv and ev- and books and all those combined uh-huh. so definitely gaming would be the a big use case of metaverse because people get lost in the game worlds all the time doesn't matter it's minecraft or it's halo or doom or whatever it is they have their own worlds universes so there would be a use case in that and then the other use case would be in in education where people spend hours and hours in a in a school and and workplaces and stuff and and so this would be a way for um more remote work but it's still engaging able to engage people more than just zoom so i would think education and workplace sort of uh, future of work type of a scenario would be the use case of it in so the next th- 2 to 3 years so you think in your opinion uh the metaverse is going to reach uh uh mainstream eventually yeah um sorry sorry you think you think the metaverse is going in your opinion you think the metaverse is going to reach uh, mainstream main adoption i think so i think so it will but we are still too early it will reach but it might look something completely different as what we cannot imagine right now it might i i what i don't see happening is people wearing these like really big bulky glasses and stuff um they might just use it through computer they might use it through some other um ways people don't even wear regular reading glasses let alone <laughs> <laughs> let alone big bulky things so yeah yeah that's um i think the technology the hardware needs to improve just like before smartphones we did have type of smartphones with really tiny keyboards and they were really unusable so the user interface wasn't there for the smartphones um until we could remove those really really tiny keyboards that our thumbs are too big to type on like i don't know if you remember blackberry and yeah, and yeah. palm pilot and all, all those sort of things so we didn't reach mass adoption with that but now with mobile phones billions of people around the world have them so yeah okay uh so what are you working right now at the moment now 
So right now, um, I'm working with a startup where we create um, smart contracts. So say if you want um, to create like an NFT minting side or you want to airdrop and send some NFTs. So uh, we have a collection of smart contracts that you can just buy the smart contracts and deploy them on your side and, and off you go pretty much. So we make it really, really easy for anyone to make their launch their NFT project to do an airdrop, loot boxes, all those sort of things. So yeah, nice. Uh, where can people find you on uh, the internet or social media for um, information to contact you, or if they want to have more information concerning you? Yeah. Um, um, where can you find me on social? Okay, so just look for my name, Sam Kamani. So S A M K A M A N I. Um, and I go on lots of podcasts. I run my own podcast, Web3 with Sam Kamani or Web3 with Sam. So just search that on any audio platform. You'll find me. You'll find me on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Just feel free to DM me. I'm always open for a conversation or yeah, feel free to reach out if you're building something in Web3 space and need any help. Uh, if I'm not able to help, I'd be able to connect you to someone who can help you. Um, so yeah, so that's that's about it. Okay, I'll uh, once we finish, we'll uh, I'll put uh, you'll give me the information and uh, I'll put it on the show notes uh, at the yes. end, uh, so people uh, can reach you. So uh, thanks a lot, Sam, for being here on uh, on my podcast. It was very uh, uh, it was very fun and educational. Uh, I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to talk about the metaverse for a while now and uh, I couldn't find someone and you accept my, my invitation. I'm very uh, uh, happy for that and thankful. So thank you once again. No uh, problem. I have an episode on metaverse, like one of the early episodes. So if you go and listen to that, that has a much better explanation. It's just a monologue. It's a very short episode, maybe five, 10, no, um, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, something like that. Um, that will explain everything in much better way because I could um, distill down my thoughts and just create a monologue on that. So, and yeah. lots of examples. So, so I have a listen to that. That'll give you a um, that's the one that's the one i listen i think i think it's the first yeah. maybe, for, if, maybe first the fifth, five within the, fifth, the first yeah, five. five six yeah that's the one yeah, i listen yeah. and then once i listen to that i said hey let me try to reach him so yes, we'll have yes. on the podcast so yeah it's very good everybody that uh that episode is strictly yeah. like he talks about the basic of uh, metaverse and he explains a lot and uh yes. yeah it's very good so what's the name of your podcast if people want to listen it's it's Web3 with Sam Kamani. So yeah, so just go and look for Web3 with Sam Kamani and you'll find you'll find on internet or on any any audio platform. I'm yeah, there. very, very good podcast. Very good podcast. Uh, so once again, yeah, thanks a lot, Sam, for being here and uh, for doing this uh, with me. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening and watching. I hope everybody found some, uh, some good stuff, some uh, education on uh, on the metaverse and uh i'm surely gonna invite uh sam again because he's very knowledgeable in the, in the space of uh, nft and all that so uh i hope he's gonna come back uh, so thank you everybody once again for listening to this podcast and uh, we'll see you on the next episode bye everybody thank you thank you richard <laughs> no problem